In this video, we're going to look at the ABB 580 series drive and the keypad backup and restore functions. Our agenda is creating a drive backup file, using the auto backup, restoring from a backup, including a full restore and partial restore options, copying backup files onto your computer, and we're going to go over some notes about backups. All right, we're looking at the ABB ACH 580. This is part of the 580 series drives, and we're going to talk about backing up from the drive to the keypad. So we can take a look at backing up right now. This drive is named ACH 580. That's fine. So we can go to menu and we can go up to backups. I'm going to go up so I can get down to the backups quickly. And at backups, we can say create a backup. At this point, no backups have been created with this drive yet. So by hitting select, by create a backup, we are backing up the information in the drive and we are bringing it up to the keypad. The saved parameters in the control panel on the keypad, the control panel itself, is saved into control panel memory. Uh, you can restore these parameters and back them up to the drive and you can store up the two backup files in the control panel. The control panel also has a dedicated space for an automatic backup and the control panel memory is non-volatile and does not depend on the control panel battery. Now that we've all completed our backup, we can see that the drive's names there and the date, and that's the backup that we just created. So we have one backup into the control panel right now. Let's back out of this. Let's change the name, just so we have a different name on the drive. And let's say we want to change some parameters and we want to change the name of the drive and the new set of parameters were changed. And we're going to go in here and we're going to call our second mode of operation and we're going to just call it the ACH 580 and we'll call it the change the drive name to ACH 582. So we want to add a 2 to it. We're going to go over here to 1, 2, 3, come back down with the down arrow, go to 1, 2. So that will be our second mode of operation. Hit save. Now we have a, a new name, ACH 582. And we're going to assume that we've changed a lot of parameters and we have a different operation mode right now. And we are going to go into and create a backup like that. I'm going to go up to get to the backups quickly. There we are. Create a backup. Select. Now we're backing up the drive again. And what's happening is the backup file contains most of the editable values in parameter groups 10 through 99. The control panel's home view information is also in the backup. But read data, false alarms, and drive history logs are not part of a backup or the restore function. So right now we're finishing up our backup and we have our second backup coming up. And we'll see that in a second. And there we are. We've created a backup. We have two different backups shown with a different name but in the same date, only because I did it right now. So let's take a look at what you can do with these backup files. That's a bit of an overview. You can start the two backup files on the control panel. The control panel has a dedicated space for one automatic backup. The drive must be stopped to create a backup file. And the drive must be stopped or and in hand or local control to restore a backup file. The control panel memory is non volatile and does not depend on the control panel battery. The backup file contains most of the edible values from parameter groups 10 through 99 and the control panel home view information. Read only data, faults and alarms, drive history logs are not part of the backup or the restore function. The actual date and time is stored on the control panel. When you restore using the restore, you will not overwrite the date and time from the original backup, but will set the formats if selected. Let's say it's time to restore parameters back onto the drive from a backup. We can go into menu, we can go to backups, hit select, and we have two sets of backups. Currently the drive is in ACH 580 number two backup, so let's look at what we can do by going into the ACH 580 backup. We have several options. So looking at our page here, we can restore all parameters. That'll be all the back the parameters from the keypad back to the drive. So that's a restore function. We can select parameters to restore. We can select user sets and we can set certain data items. These are all different partial restores for different items that you can restore. So in the parameter restore groups, our options are shown here. 
and you can select one or multiple ones and we'll go through these in the slides in a moment. Let's take a look at selected user sets. You can select that. You have the four different user sets. You can take either any individual one or you can check up, you know, up to all four of them if you want to and just restore those user sets to the drive. And then you've got your program data items and the items that I have listed here is the home view of the user, drive specific tools, uh, specific tool sets, favorite parameter lists, and user resource text, user identification. You can select one or multiple of these and we'll go through that in our slides. Let's take a look at automatic backups. The drive will make an automatic backup two hours after no parameters changes have occurred through the keypad. So it's been two hours. We can go to menu, go to backups, and here we see and labeled ACH 582 and it's a second one because it happened earlier and it says 623 automatic backup. So if we select that, what we're looking at is an automatic backup that occurred two hours after the last parameter was changed. Now, this occurs anytime a parameter was changed through the keypad. If something was done through field bus, the keypad doesn't know something was changed, therefore it wouldn't actually occur. The great part about this is you can go up to a drive. Let's just say the drive stopped working and you have no idea when it happened. If you go up to a drive, you can go up to menu, backups, and you can see the automatic backup. If that automatic backup had occurred, you know, recently, you know, the drive's been running for months and all suddenly it stopped running overnight. The next morning you come in, you go look, automatic backup sitting there, and it happened at 3 o'clock a.m. That will tell you that it actually happened, somebody changed a parameter through the keypad at 1 o'clock a.m. Now, then you know that something was changed. You can go back to one of your other pre-saved backups. Now, another great thing about an automatic backup is let's just say I'm in here, I'm going through parameters, and I'm changing things. I walked up to a drive, I started changing things because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do some stuff, and I changed some parameters, and uh, what ended up happening was it stopped working, okay? Suddenly, oh, it doesn't work anymore. Something's wrong. I haven't left the drive for two hours. I can always go, wait a minute. I can always go back to where I was. The last automatic backup occurred earlier and that was where the drive was at. So I can select that and I can restore all the parameters. And by restoring all of them, I will be able to, most of the drive must be off when you restore parameters, okay? It cannot be in auto mode or running. And then I can restore all the parameters. And uh, at that point, where I was before I started doing my work, or started working on the drive, I am back to where I was and I'm fine. So automatic backup, great for working on stuff, great for finding out when something was changed. It's a beautiful part of the drive. This is all part of the ABB ACH 580 drive and the 580 series. Let's look at copying parameters to multiple drives. You can restore all the parameters from one drive to multiple identical drives. If the configurations are identical, you can back up from one drive that's set up and restore all the information to each individual drive. If needed, you can select backup options for individual parts of the parameter groups that they are available. One drive to another drive with different horsepower. Backup options are available. After the original control panel is installed, the date and time will need to be entered on the original control panel. Selecting parameter and restore groups. So when we select parameter and restore groups, we have multiple options. You can select one or all the options as shown in the video. Uh, ID runs results is we store the ID identification run information. Field bus information can be stored. Extension IO information if you have the extensions on the drive. Communication settings. 
and adaptive programming, and others would be anything that's not listed above on this chart. Select user sets. There's up to four select user sets in a drive. You could restore any individual one or all four. Selected production data items. The home view of the user, drive specific tool sets, favorite parameter lists, and user resource text and user identifications are all individual items that you can select individually or select multiple ones for restoring. Let's look at the backup icons. The backup icons, the, the little note with an A, is for automatic backup. The other things that we have is compatible backups, incompatible backups, and partially compatible backup notes. If there's no letters in the middle, it's just a compatible backup. Handling partially compatible backups. In some situations, an exact copy of the download is not appropriate for the target drive. Some examples are the drive firmware is different due to the control board types. A download to an old drive specified parameters, the values are not available in the old drive. A download can include illegal values for a target drive, i.e. the backup from a small drive that can have a switching frequency of 12 kHz, whereas a bigger drive can only handle an 8 kHz switching frequency. As default, the control panel handles these situations by discarding parameters and values that are not available on the target drive, using parameter default values when the download provides no value or invalid values, providing warnings on how to fix the information, as shown below. Okay, we're back at our drive here. Let's just say we have our backups created and we want to look at downloading the backups to your computer. The backup files can be downloaded onto your computer and it can be done very easily. We are going to just open up the little panel here so you have access to the USB port. You can take your computer cable, you can plug it into the USB port. Now if the drive's running in hand mode, this would fault the drive. If you move the drive into auto mode, so it's in auto mode, that means the drive's keypad is not part of the control of the drive at the moment. So we can plug into it and you see it says USB connected. And let's take a look at what the computer does and what you can do with the files. After you're plugged in the keypad on your computer, you will see a windows pop up, ABB Assistant Control Panel A right here. You can enter this. You have two different files on this control panel. The file locations are screen, screenshots. These are backup screenshots. We can go through that in a different, a different presentation. And we have backup. These are the one we're looking at now. In the backup area, we have two BIN files. These are actual backups. And we have one .auto file, and that's an auto backup. So we can go take a look at moving that onto your computer. Just like any USB port or anything like that, you can go in, you can select them, hit copy, you can go into a new location. I just did temporary at this moment, but you can name this location whatever you want to for storing your files. And we can go in and paste. Now I've moved these uh, copies of these files from the keypad to the computer. I can go back into the keypad or the control panel and delete the files. I've deleted them now. At this point, the files are no longer there. Okay. So I can go and look. The files are no longer in the control panel. Let's just say I plug in a different control panel. I plug in a new control panel in for a different drive, and there it is. No location there. I can go on my computer, take the, the, the uh, files that are loaded on my computer. I can copy them, and I can move them straight over into the control panel, just like you would move something onto a USB file, a USB device. Now, at this point, the backup files are in the locations on the control panel that can be plugged onto the, you know, into another drive and they are there to be used. Things to note, you cannot change the name of the backup file. The backup file's names cannot be changed. Therefore, when you store them on your computer, you would use a location or a, name, a naming system for your folders on your computer, because if you change the name in any way, the file will not work. Let's review copy backup files. You can copy backup files from any PC with any file manager application, example, Windows Explorer. Step one, connect the control panel to a PC with a USB cable. If the Windows prompts you to install a USB driver, install them as instructed in Drive Composer user manual. Step two, open ABD Drives Assistant, the control panel with the Windows Explorer, and go to the directory where the files are stored. Back up the files stored in ABD Drives Assistant's control panel, ABD Drive Assistant control panel underscore A backup. 
You can copy these files from the folder just as any other file in Windows Explorer. Only two backups, .bins and one .auto file can be loaded onto a control panel. Let's look at some notes on backing up and restoring from the control panel. Parameter 96.102 user lock functionality can be set to disable backup functions. The drive name is shown on the PC tools in the status bar on top of the control panel screen while using the drive. If more than one drive is connected to the control panel, the drive name makes it easy to identify each drive. It also identifies any backups you create for the drive. The automatic backup function delay time cannot be adjusted or disabled. It is two hours. The automatic backup does not update from parameter changes from a field bus interface unless the field bus forces parameter 9607 parameter save to save. Fault message. 1080 backup restore timeout is caused by the control panel has failed to communicate with the drive when backing up was being made or restored. To resolve, reset the fault and request a backup or restore again. You will not lose information or damage the drive. Fault message, 6591 backup restore timeout is caused during a backup creating or restoring operation. A control panel or a PC tool has failed to communicate with the drive as part of its operation. To resolve, check the control panel or PC tool communication and if it's still in backup or restore state. Let's do an overview of what we just went through. The ABB 580 series control panel backup ability is a tool that allows for recovery as needed to backup program operating drives or to update replacement drive units. Automatic backups allow for parameter changes and recovery to drive starting state if two hours have not occurred without a change. Automatic backup indicates if a drive programming has been changed through the keypad two hours prior to the backup being created. The control panel backup restorability can be used to expedite multiple drive startups when a process is for similar for the same drive or different drive ratings. Drive backup files can be remotely stored for future use as needed. The ABB 580 series control panel backup ability allows for flexible drive backup and recovery as needed. This concludes this video on the ABB 580 series control panel backup and restore functions.